You know, I've always found it interesting looking back on my wife's life before she died uh, from alcohol use disorder four years ago. But there were incidences as far back as 2002, and then there was a really big one in 2009, right around that area. And as I look back, the incidences that were extreme uh, in the way that they were, that she went through, I mean, extreme binging periods that lasted three, four months at a time. Uh, and then there was periods of peace, and then uh, you know, periods of just craziness. And as, as time went on, those crazy periods just got closer and closer, closer together until it essentially ended her life. And looking back, it's funny, they were almost like islands. They, there was calm between these huge episodes of storm. Uh, and if you start, start to see this trend in a loved one where they are having huge binge drinking episodes, well, that's a red flag. That means they don't have the ability to regulate their, their alcohol intake. And if these periods are getting closer and closer together, uh, it's a sign that uh, something very serious is awaiting. Uh, I'm going to tell the story of my wife uh, around 2009, so listen to this. And I think it was around 2009, and I can't remember what particularly triggered this, this incident with my wife where she completely went off the rails and began to binge drink. I think a lot of it had to do with the stress of the housing market. We bought this massive house in Escondida. It was three stories, over 4,000 square feet. I mean, there was only the three of us, and my son didn't particularly like the house because he couldn't find us half the time. Uh, and we didn't like the schools in the area. It was in Escondido, and we were starting to drive our son back to Temecula, which is about 30 miles north. I think it was creating a lot of stress because we didn't really want to be there. And unfortunately, my wife began uh, an episode where she just couldn't stop drinking, uh, and I wasn't around that much because I was working. I was out in the field. I was a field salesperson and a manager uh, with our own brokerage. Um, and it, it, just not being there, I think, was added to the stress. But I would come home and she would be you know, completely incapacitated. And I, and I, I noticed this went on for several weeks. Uh, and unfortunately, I came home one day and it got really bad. Uh, she had, in fact, been dry heaving. I think she ran out of alcohol and wasn't able to get to the store for whatever reason. Uh, and she had been dry heaving so bad that, that, you know, there was blood coming out of her mouth and her nose. Uh, and that wasn't even half the problem. She had had some kind of blockage uh, in her intestinal tract. And every, all the fluids that she was bringing in her body was not, was not being released. So she had a stomach. Her stomach was, it looked like she was pregnant. And... Uh, I noticed it when she lay down on the bed. I mean, there was almost this mountain over the top of her. So, I, of course, we called 911, um, and it was unbelievable. Uh, it took like five people on a stretcher. We had to get her down the stairs, and it took like an hour because she had gained so much weight. At this point, I think she was tipping the scales at around 350 pounds because all her fluid uh, was in her body. Uh, and it was just a, a horrific, horrific memory. And it goes, to, it goes without saying that it was absolutely dreadful for her, but we put her in the hospital. She ended up being in the hospital for about 10 days, uh, and they had to pump all the fluid out of her. She did, in fact, have a blockage. I can't remember what they called it at the time, but they took over 50 pounds of fluid right out of her, her stomach, intestines, and her whole intestinal tract. It was just, it was just complete bloat, um, and it was just horrendous for her. And unfortunately it did nothing to deter her from continuing to drink. She didn't have another episode for like in that range for another four years. Um, but I remember it was the beginning of, as far as a husband, just kind of going, wow, what, what, where are we going with this? And I think that really the point of this video is a family member. It, it's really hard to understand why something as dramatic as almost dying doesn't make someone stop or doesn't give them the pause to stop their drinking. Isn't that a rock bottom? And unfortunately for some, there is no rock bottom. Uh, and as a family member, you have to be able to recognize that. And you have to understand your own boundaries, how it's affecting you, and obviously what the person is going through, because you obviously do not want that person to go through this kind of trauma in their own life. And again, if you um, are interested in working with someone who knows 25 years experience with this, working with families, working with alcoholics, click on the link above. I've saved hundreds of alcoholics and their families. 
And again, please like, share, and comment. And again, join our Facebook group. It's called Amanda, A Cautionary Tale of Alcoholism. It's become a very good support group. And we talk about alcoholism in the family and everything connected with it. And again, thanks for listening.